This is part three of the practice final exam for honors chemistry, and this is the section that is the free response section, okay, where we're really going to look at how you do your work as well as just the answer. So let's go back over these problems here. So the first one says a particular compound containing only chlorine and oxygen is 52.6% chlorine by mass. So the molar mass is between 60 and 70. And that, we don't actually need that little piece uh, of information until we get down to B. And we want to find what's the empirical formula of this compound. So since we know it's chlorine and oxygen, then the compound's going to be Cl and O. And we really need to have moles. So we've got to find moles of each of those. We need a mole ratio. The biggest problem I've seen when people do this problem is they get a mass ratio, uh, which is not the correct thing to do. So we're going to use our ideas that we've learned before. And if I tell you that we have 52.56 grams of chlorine, now where'd that come from? We say, let's kind of assume that we have 100 grams of our material. Therefore, 52.56% of 100 grams is 52.56 grams. And we subtract from 100, and that gives us the 47.44 grams of oxygen. We're going to take the grams, and each of these grams, and turn them into moles. So here we're just going to use the molar mass of chlorine. And this is the one time where we just do the mass of one chlorine atom, because when we would get done, you want to how many moles of chlorine atoms for every mole of oxygen atoms. Um, so we don't use the diatomic number, we just use the uh, single number of the element. So 56.56 divided by 35.45 grams, and we end up with 1.4826 moles of chlorine. Doing the same thing here for the oxygen, we get this much oxygen, we use the molar mass of oxygen atoms, and we get 2.965 moles of oxygen atoms. Then to turn this into a nice ratio, we divide both of them by the smaller number, and it comes out to be 1, and 1 1.99, which is basically 2. So our final formula here is ClO2, 1 Cl for every 2 O's, and that is our empirical formula. Now the next piece is to say, well, what's the molecular formula? And the molecular formula is going to either be this empirical formula or some multiple. So it might be ClO2, it might be Cl2O4, it might be Cl3O6, just some multiple. And we need another clue about where what, what multiple that is. And that clue is back here. That's the fact that the molar mass is doing 60 and 70. So we're going to take the ClO2 and just say, well, how much is that going to weigh? And so we find out, well, 1 Cl would be 35.45 grams per mole, and 1 uh, O2 would be 2 times 16, 32, added together that's 67.45 grams per mole, and that is between 60 and 70, so we know that this is our answer. So the uh, molecular formula and the empirical formula are both ClO2. So again, be sure and do mole ratios when you do this kind of a problem. And then there's another clue, like usually the molar mass, that lets you figure out which multiple is the actual molecular formula. Now part two down here is talking about our lab, the cabbage lab. And we have a HBr, MgOH taken twice, and NH3. Now HBr, we should recognize that that's a strong acid. The MgOH, we tested that, that was magnesium hydroxide, that was milk of magnesia, weak base, and ammonia is a weak base. So cabbage colors, okay, we know that uh, red is an acid, so this guy must be an acid. The blues and the greens, those are bases, so both of those are bases. Now that strong acid, okay, is going to be a strong electrolyte, it's going to be very light, and we know the magnesium hydroxide and the ammonia were both very dim, especially the magnesium hydroxide is very dim. Okay, the last part here is to write the dissociation equation. Okay, the HBr, single arrow because it's strong, and it breaks up into the two ions, H plus and Br minus. The magnesium hydroxide, it's weak, so we get a double arrow, and the magnesium is Mg2 plus, and we get two hydroxides. Now the third one's a little different, and that is we know ammonia is a base, it's a bronze Lowry base, and it doesn't have any hydroxides in it. So when we write the equation, we have to mix it with water. 
and the NH3 is a proton acceptor. It grabs an H plus and becomes NH4 plus, and it completes some hydroxides. So those few ions are what will light up the light bulb dimly. The last part is how many milliliters of 7 molar HBr solution is required to prepare 250 milliliters of 0.14 molar HBr. Well, with that kind of a problem, you can see that that's got dilution. We're taking one kind of a strong solution, a 7 molar HBr solution, and we're diluting it until it's only 0.14 molar. Now, the formula for that is volume times molarity equals volume times molarity. Okay, because volume times molarity gives you moles, so we have the same moles of solute before and after we dilute. So I write my uh, what I know over here. So the volume is X, uh, molarity is 7 molar. The next volume is 250 milliliters, and the next molarity is 0 0.140 molar. Then I just substitute into my equation. Okay, so I... ESA, so I is my information, E is my equation, S I substituted in right here, and then I go ahead and I like to show all my work, so I go ahead and solve for X, and so X is going to be 250 times 0 0.140 divided by 7, and my molarities cancel out, and I'm left with 5 milliliters. Now, this is a case where it doesn't, doesn't have to be, the volume can be in milliliters, it can be in liters, it doesn't matter. It's just if you use milliliters here, your answer is going to be milliliters here. And in this case, that's, that's a good way to do it. You could change that to liters, and then you would have the answer in liters. But milliliters is fine for this. Okay, second page. We're starting here. The solubility of magnesium hydroxide at 20 degrees is 0. Uh, one zero zero one four grams per 100 grams of water. And that's how we talk about solubility. So how many grams of water are needed to dissolve 0 0.0112 um, grams of magnesium hydroxide? That is just a proportion. So we just set up a proportion. So if it takes this many grams can go into 100 milliliters of water, then this many grams would need how many milliliters of water? I mean, sorry, grams of water. So... Um, we're just going to do cross multiplying and solve for x. Now, whenever x is in the denominator, a lot of times people goof that up when they do the calculation. So again, I like to show all my work, so I do a cross multiplying. So, one zero point one one four times x, and the other way, a hundred grams times point zero one one two, and then we just solve for x. X equals 100 times 0 0.0112 divided by 0 0.0014, and that comes out to be 800 grams of water. So when you tried this, if you didn't get 800 grams first time, then you need to go back and do all the steps. Don't, don't uh, take shortcuts on this kind of stuff. Okay, number three, we're getting into our stoichiometry now. So we are talking about 4.50 grams of C3H8O, and it's burned in air. So we're saying, well, that's our given value. And what are we looking for here? We are looking for liters of CO2. And it's important to identify these two things. For you. What's your given number? What are you going to start with? And what are you trying to get to? On um, Remember our mole map, we went from grams to liters. So in order to go from grams to moles, we're going to need a molar mass and the molar mass is C3H8O, so it's 3 C's, 3 times 12 is 36.03, 8 times 1.01, 8.08, and 1 times 16 is 16. Add them together, I get 60.11 grams per mole. And that'll be my conversion factor. So we can see the problem. We start our given number. We're going to go from grams to moles, so grams drop out. And then once we're at moles, we have to go back to our balanced equation, and for every 2 moles of C3H8, we're going to use 6 moles of CO2. Now that we're at moles of CO2, we have to say, well, I'm trying to get to liters. So if I want to go to liters, I'm going to use my 22.4 liters per mole as my conversion. And when I get all done, that was my calculator answer. And so I would list it as 4.53 liters of CO2. And that was my problem. That everything else was three significant figures, so I left my answer three significant figures. 
Now the second part of this problem says, if 4.25 liters of CO2 was actually produced, what was the percent yield? So this is our calculator to answer, and that would be our theoretical yield. So theoretically, we should get 4.53 liters of CO2. What if we only got 4.25 liters? What we can see what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a little equation and say 4.25 liters over 4.53. So the actual yield over the theoretical yield times 100%, and I get 93.819. And so I just round that off to 93.8%. That's our yield. Now, part B, more stoichiometry. And so what happens here is 50 grams of C3H8O and 50 grams of O2, those are combined. So when we see that we have two given numbers, then this sounds like it's going to be a limiting reactant problem, and we are going to have to worry about that down here. So what is the theoretical yield of H2O? In other words, just, you know, how much H2O theoretically is going to be produced? So we have to figure out, well, which of these two chemicals is actually going to run out first? And what the way I like to do this is just say, well, starting with 50 grams, so make, given that I have 50 grams of C3H8O, how many uh, grams of H2O am I going to produce here? So I'm going to go grams, grams to moles, we did that before, and then back to the equation, 2 moles of C3H8O for every 8 moles of water. If we go back to the equation, we're using 8 moles of water in this case. So 2 to 8 relationship. And then we have to go from moles of water back to 18 grams of water, and the 18 grams, I got that by doing H2 plus O, added together 18.02 grams per mole. That's my conversion. And when I do that whole problem, I get 59.95 grams of water. So if I use all 50 grams of my starting material, I could have gotten 59.9 grams if I had plenty of oxygen. Now I do the same thing again. And this time my given is 50 grams of water and the desired again grams of H2O. So 50 grams of water. Okay, of oxygen, excuse me, oxygen, and oxygen is O2. Each oxygen is 16, so O2 is 32 grams per mole. Then back to the equation, okay, I have 9 moles of O2. We can go back and look real quick. Okay, 9 moles of O2 for every 8 moles of H2O. So 9 and 8 are the two numbers I'm going to use. And then I go from uh, grams of uh, moles of water back to grams of water. Now notice for a limiting reactant kind of a problem, once you get to here, this is going to be the same for both problems. Because once you get to your product, moles of your product, then you just finish it off. So in this case, I end up with 25 grams, 25.0277 from my calculator. So this one, the oxygen, is going to limit how much I can make. I can only have enough oxygen to make 25 grams of water, uh, whereas I had um, enough of my C3H8O to make 59 grams of water. So the smaller answer is my real, true, theoretical yield for this reaction. So identify now, this is just terminology. So who's the limiting, who's the excess reactant? Well, the, and the chemical that gave me the smaller answer is my limiting reactant, so that's my oxygen, and the chemical that did give me the larger answer, that's my excess. Now, not a big surprise, and the final question on here is, if you have excess reactant, C3H8O, how much remains? What is how much excess do we have? So this time, the given and desired are a little bit different, the given, we're going to go back and use the 50 grams of oxygen, use our limiting reactant. That's what we use as our given. And then the desired is the grams of our excess reactant. So 50 grams of O2, here's my O2 to moles, grams to moles. Here are the two numbers from the conversion, from the uh, balanced equation. And then here's my molar mass I've calculated before for the C3H8O. And I find out that if I'm going to use all 50 grams of O2, I'm going to need 20.87 or 20.9 grams 
of my C3H8O. So now it's just a simple subtraction problem. If I had 50 grams of C3H8O to start with, which I did, and I used up 20.9 grams of it, then how much is going to remain? I'm going to have 20.91 grams remaining. So in this case, I had to do three of these equations, okay, three of these line equations, okay, two of them to figure out, you know, what my theoretical yield was because I had to figure out not only what the answer is, but also who is the limiting reactant. And then, given my limiting reactant, then I want to desire it as my excess reactant, and then I can find out, uh, you know, how much I have left over just by doing a simple subtraction problem. And that is part three of this test.